Welcome to my channel and thanks for being here for our wonderful collaboration on the Christmas in July theme. There are 25 wonderful artists and 25 fabulous displays of art and I know you're going to love every single one of them. This is my channel, The Morning Pour, and this is Holly. Thank you for being here. In this video, I'm going to be releasing my second goddess within my new series, the Goddess Collection series, that I launched very recently here at my channel. This goddess is titled, The Goddess of Remembrance and Generosity. One thing I love about Christmas in July is the additional colors. Besides red and green, we tread into lime green and lighter blues and even aqua blues. I love the red, the green, the limey green, the lighter blues, and the aqua blues together. I love this color palette, and this is one of the things I really love about the Christmas in July theme, at least for me. This is the palette that I really like within this theme, and that's what I'm going to be bringing forth within my goddess presentation. So I'm starting with very, very fluid paint, and my first my first try at this is going to be a little bit of a Dutch pour and we're gonna go from there because as you can see I'm not totally thrilled with this result I mean I guess it's okay but it's not what I was going for so I'm gonna be trying a wandering ring pour but this is very very fluid paint this is Dutch pour paint consistency and this is because I don't really want a lot of really hard lines and distinct shapes in my background. I do a little bit, but not uh, not as if I were to be mixing this paint mound on a mound on a mound, right? That would not give me the texture that I want. I had masked off that section over there, and then I realized that as my painting was unfolding with my uh, my initial work with this background that I'm pouring on, that I'd be better off actually just pouring this section now rather than later. So that's why I unmasked that there and I'm starting to, to uh, tilt the canvas to get this coverage going a little bit more in that area. And now I'm just adding in another wandering ring pour right across the top there. I really want this red to be vibrant. And as it is, I can tell that some of my area down in the lower part is a bit darker than what I had originally aimed for. I really want this to be very beautiful and very vibrant. Of course, I do want it to sink a little bit behind what I'm going to be painting on top of it, but I still want vibrant beauty and I really want it to go within my color palette within this fabulous theme. In considering doing a goddess within this collaboration, I first was thinking, okay, well, what does Christmas mean to a lot of us? What does Christmas mean to me? It's certainly a heartfelt time. It's a heartfelt season where we think about people that we really care about, that mean a lot to us. And this is where I brought in the word remembrance. And it's also a time of giving. And so I looked at different words for this and I had a few ideas because of the person who I've chosen that this goddess is actually going to be named for. And one of the words I almost used was altruism. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Because the definition of that word actually fits really, really perfectly for what I want to convey. But I don't really know if I feel that word has the best ring to it. I guess it's sort of stately though, isn't it? So I thought generosity is, um, it can mean different things. And I think that altruism is a better fit, honestly, but generosity is also a theme that we really think of in terms of the Christmas type of spirit. And so I've decided to go with the word generosity as the second word that describes this goddess. So who is this goddess named for? Well, that will be coming up ahead. And you can just take a few moments and see how I work this painting. I did do additional brushwork in the background because in the end, it was a little bit too dark for me and some of the vibrancy that I had hoped would end up there really didn't. And so I actually just did brushwork in there because I had originally painted those other leaves on there first. And if I hadn't done that, I might've just re-poured it 
but because they were there I decided to just add additional brighter colors in with my brush. I also had hand painted in that hummingbird, uh, well both times actually. In the end um, it was a little too small and it wasn't positioned correctly so I painted over that too and then I repainted it. Okay so Christmas, you know, yes I have heard of Christmas in July. Um, I was probably in fifth or sixth grade and there was a song that we sang and I don't remember exactly how it went but one of the parts and it's the only part that I've ever remembered was Christmas in July there's no reason why I don't remember what came after that maybe we can't there's no reason why we can't build a Christmas tree so high or I don't know something like that but I just remember Christmas in July I didn't really know about Australia and their weather patterns and all of that or just other themes that might have really spawned the birth of Christmas in July at that time, but I was certainly aware of the idea of Christmas in July from a pretty young age, even though it wasn't really in my direct experience. And uh, so, you know, I really love the heartfelt sentiment of Christmas and, um, and just remembering people that I love and that mean a lot to me. And so in considering who this goddess could be named for, well, in a way, I feel that she could be named for all of us because I believe that most all of us and probably anybody here watching probably fits within this category, um, really does have those heartfelt times for people that they love and care about and people that they're generous to. So in that way, I kind of thought about maybe just not naming her for a specific person but there is somebody that really does stand out because this person goes above and beyond for people. And this is why the word altruism actually first stood out to me a little bit more than generosity. And she was the first uh, fluid artist painting friend that I made. And we met in a live chat on the Massey Boys channel. And we, she started talking to me there, saying hi to me, and we started chit-chatting. I soon after noticed that she came and visited my channel and started commenting under my videos. And so I started going to hers and commenting under her videos. Within a, This was maybe within a week or so of starting my channel. I probably had 20 subscribers at that time. And it was within a couple weeks after that and I basically was given sort of a invitation if I wanted one to join a collaboration and it was not even a collaboration that she herself was putting on but someone else was putting on and um, and this person though was was very helpful within it as she uh, typically tends to be and so what I've come to see over time is that this person has helped many artists particularly those who have very young channels with not a lot of subscribers and she makes available to them the opportunity to collaborate so that they can get a little bit of interaction get seen by other people and boost their channels and their subscribership and this is really the opposite of what most content creators do and um, you know most of you probably know that and I've always been grateful. I had so much fun in that collaboration with not only her, but the others that I met. And so there is another person too that, you know, that deserves a very special goddess naming after her as well. And I will be getting to that soon. But I felt I needed to start with the person who was the one who I met first, who met me first, who was the one who brought me into that collaboration and who I have since then watched help so many other people and by now I'm sure you know who I am talking about so who is this goddess named for well that my friends of course is the one and the only Donna of the channel it's art by Donna M she has made such a huge difference for me and so many other artists and she really really deserves to have a goddess of this magnitude and of this titling named after her because she really lives up to not only the words 
but the meaning of the words wholeheartedly and completely. And um, I started my channel as a place to just put my art and have a little fun, but very soon into it, it completely changed from that to one of community and camaraderie and some of the best fun that I have had <laughs> in years and um, and some of the best fun that was really beyond anything I would have imagined. And it's, uh, it's made a world of difference and it's completely changed why I even paint and continue with this channel. So I can't thank Donna enough for the difference that she's made for me. And I know that so many people, including many who are watching this right now, feel the exact same because she really is this type of person. She's not only been this for me, but she continues to be this type of person for many, many artists since, uh, since that time. And, and I believe that she will continue in the same fa fashion for as long as she is uh, able to or inspired to keep going with her YouTube channel. And I know that the new friendships that she forges through doing this mean more to her than anything else about the channel. So to me, Donna is uh, such a beautiful example of that heartfelt, beautiful feeling that the Christmas spirit is really all about. And we can bring that spirit into our hearts at any time. It's just that Christmas helps us remember it more distinctly at a pointed moment in time. But we can really bring that forth any moment. And kindness, upliftment, generosity, helping people around us. And I've literally seen how as a community, this group of artists has not only had so much fun together, but we've flourished and grown together because we've helped one another. And it's been incredible. So not only have we all been benefited by Donna, those of us who have, but at least for me and, and for you too, probably, if you've stopped to think about it, you probably also can recognize that when we actually come together in a spirit of open-heartedness rather than competition, that we ourselves actually grow faster. And I don't believe it's limited to just here on YouTube because I've seen it elsewhere. I've seen it work in multitudes of areas, not only in my life, but within other examples that I'm not directly engaged in within my life, but I've been able to observe. And I've seen how the spirit of community and working together rather than competing against one another from the viewpoint of scarcity and competition, but of celebrating and having fun and helping to uplift each other, but in a wholesome kind of way where everyone benefits rather than where anybody is just taking advantage of someone or being taken advantage of, because that doesn't really work either. But when it's in the proper balance, it really actually does help everybody soar and everybody grow and excel within their own individual experiences and within that very community. It's absolutely the most beautiful thing that I've ever really witnessed within my life. And I believe it's what humanity is really meant to be and the way that they're meant to not only experience life, but the very way in which we each individually as well as collectively would be able to excel. We've been conditioned to go about it wrong, to think that there's a limited supply, that there's not enough room for everyone under the sun to flourish to the fullness that we each can. We believe we've been conditioned to view it, even if we're not really thinking about it on a subconscious kind of level, that there's scarcity, that there's not enough position for all of us. And so we have to compete and we have to outdo. But what I've seen over and over and over again is this is actually what keeps us limited. Because when we're not playing within those, it's kind of like a fake sense of reality, actually. It's not the way it was ever meant to be. And it's not the way that creation really flourishes. It's not the way that abundance really flourishes or anything wonderful that we wish to experience. So I encourage you to try it bring forth that spirit of love and generosity and kindness and remembrance into your heart and go from there and find like-minded people to have fun with 
and flourish. So in this painting, there's a lot of beautiful things going on and on her face are blue flowers and those are forget-me-nots because I love that flower when it comes to thinking about people that have meant a great deal to me and Donna is one of those people and I know that many people mean a great deal to Donna because she's got one of the biggest hearts ever. And I made a glowing heart down toward the bottom and there's a little plant growing out of it and wings and it's glowing because her heart soars and it shines brightly with love and compassion and caring, helpfulness, generosity. And there's a beautiful little hummingbird up at the top because hummingbirds are majestic and magical and sweet and they flutter about and they go to the nectar and they bring beauty to those that see them and all of this represents Donna to me. So you can let me know in the comments what Donna has meant to you. I'm sure that she probably has meant something wonderful to you in one way or another. And this is the close-up view of this beautiful goddess, the goddess of remembrance and generosity. And just up ahead is going to be the displayed results and remember my friends we are in a collaboration so here we are the displayed results of Donna goddess of remembrance and generosity isn't she beautiful and I really wanted to do my best to reflect the spirit of the one and only Donna of the channel it's art by Donna M and she is the host of this fabulous collaboration. Remember to check out Meta at Meta Pores tomorrow starting at noon Pacific time. And you have seen the second installation of my new Goddess series collection, More is Coming Soon.